Today's scripture passage comes from the book of Luke, chapter 2, beginning in verse 22, 25. Excuse me. A man named Simeon was in Jerusalem. He was righteous and devout. He eagerly anticipated the restoration of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. The Holy Spirit revealed to him that he wouldn't die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Led by the Spirit, he went to the temple area. Meanwhile, Jesus' parents brought the child to the temple so that they could do what was customary under the law. Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God. He said, Now, Master, let your servant go in peace according to your word, because my eyes have seen your salvation. You prepared this salvation in the presence of all peoples. It's a light for revelation to the Gentiles and a glory for your people Israel. His mother and father were amazed by what was said about him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated and let us pray. God of heaven and earth, God present here right now, Lord, we've already witnessed your amazing grace. We've experienced your presence through song and prayers, and we've seen you embrace your child, Rhett, as one of your own. We've seen how you are already pursuing him. Lord, may we see that same pursual in each of our lives. May we realize that the very love that we just witnessed now is the same love you have for each of us. Open our hearts, minds, and souls to that love. Open our eyes to see your salvation right in front of us. May the words of my mouth and meditations of all of our hearts be perfect and pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So um, when I was having conversations with um, the Staff Parish Relations Committee here at Hilltop a little over two years ago about us coming here to be your pastor, one of the things I kept hearing about Hilltop was how great they were for, for rookie pastors, right? I had, I had uh, heard from, from Fred himself of how awesome uh, you were to him as he grew and developed as a pastor. And I was going to share some terrible stories about Fred, but he's actually here, so I can't do that. Uh, but no, Fred really, he sold you, and he did a great job, and he was totally honest and true about that. Y'all, y'all took this rookie pastor who had no idea what he was doing, and two years later, I'm a completely different person for the better, and I thank you for that. But along with your advice, along with your love and encouragement, there are also just the natural things that happen when you're a new pastor. There's always going to be my first wedding. There's always going to be that first funeral. There's always going to be that first baptism. And within just a few months of me being here back in 2015, all three of those things happened very rapidly. And I'll never forget the first pap- baptism. It was little Andrew Galvinlock, and I, was, and I was holding him in my hands. And what was running through my mind was not the magnificence of this experience. It wasn't how holy and sacred this was. It was this one single solitary thought, don't drop the baby. You know, I had held babies a lot by this point in my life. I had, had two of my own, and, and I'm, I'm really good with babies. I, I, I'm really, really good with them. But in this moment, it's like I had never held a baby before in my life. And I just kept thinking to myself, don't drop Andrew. Don't get water in his eyes. Oh, my gosh, the water's too cold. All these things running through my head as my first baptism. But the moment I did just what, what happened here just moments ago, the moment I dipped my hand in that water and I said, you are now baptized in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all of that changed. And I realized then in there that this was not something that I was to fear. This was, this was the very purpose of my life. This is the purpose of all of our lives, to go forth into the nations, making disciples and baptizing them. It was an amazing experience. It's why I'm here. Mandy and Shane, this is why I do what I do, <laughs> to do that. It's an amazing thing. And along with having that transformational experience that morning, I remember also going home that afternoon with a great fear in my heart. And that fear was, oh my gosh, what if that feeling goes away? Will baptism ever become routine for me? Will baptism ever become mundane? Will I ever just only look at it as a part of my job and that's it? I know that's a real risk because just like many of you, I know what it's like to walk into a sanctuary and to see either the baptismal font or to see the communion elements on the table and just think to myself, oh my gosh, communion service is going to go late today, right? We're going to miss lunch. We're going to be late for the Vikings game because of these things. That 
can be so special, that should be so special, but it's so amazing, isn't it, how quick we start to look at these things as just add-ons, as just extras, as, as things that are going to throw off our day. Routine. Mundane. Things that we'd rather just skip over. As we enter into a new year, there are a lot of things in each of our lives that we look at just like that. Things that have just become so normal, so such a part of our daily lives that they've lost their sacredness. Twelve years ago, I, I stood in front of a congregation across from Shannon and told her that I love her. And every time I say that to her, it should mean the same thing, if not more but I'd be lying if I said I did that every single time I said it. Nine years ago today, nine, not nine years ago today, but nine years ago-ish, my son wrapped his infant hand around my pinky. And you all know, well, many of you know what that grip feels like, right? And it was so sacred, so special. But now I get so easily annoyed when he comes up to me and he just wants to play. See how those special things in our life can just so quickly lose their significance, can become so, just things we don't want to do? And maybe we can apply that to everything in our lives. Everything in our lives that's routine, everything in our lives that just seems to be just a part of life. Getting up in the morning, getting dressed, sending our kids off to school, going to work, opening up our email. Every single thing. What if we looked at those things as if there is something profound that we can learn from them? Something amazing that we can get out of them? Something transformational that we can experience out of these plain, old, ordinary aspects of life? I think... Simeon, and even Mary and Joseph may have experienced something like that in this chapter. You see, this just happened eight days after Christ's birth. We're only eight days in to Jesus' life on earth. Only eight days in. And I don't know about you, but I remember eight days into being a parent, things got pretty old pretty quick. Right? You think in the hospital room that, that all these things, you're going to be this perfect dad and this perfect parent, and you're going to do all these things. I'm going to get up every single time Shannon has to get up to feed the baby. And eight days in, I didn't do that at all. <laughs> right? I wonder where Mary and Joseph were at. I wonder how routine their lives had gotten so quickly. I wonder how mundane. I wonder how annoyed they were getting with baby Jesus by this point. They were very real people, and Jesus was a very real baby. But they had this thing they had to do. Eight days in, by law, they had to take their child to the temple for dedication and for Mary to make a sacrifice. It wasn't as flexible as we are with baptism in the United Methodist uh, heritage. I get calls all the time when, it, when a baby is born, Pastor Kelly, when is the right time to have my child baptized? And my answer is, well, well as a Christian, I believe we, we want to get all children baptized soon because, because they are... God's children. We want to show them and the family, and we want God to bestow this amazing love upon them through the sacrament of holy baptism. We believe that God is already pursuing these children, so, so let's do it soon. But I also want to do what's best for your family. So we, we're, we're a little flexible here. For Mary and Joseph, not so much. They knew that eight days in, just like all families across Israel, they had to go and dedicate their child and make a sacrifice. This is something that could have been very, very special for them, but on the flip side, it could also be very routine. Maybe a little mundane even. Maybe even for all the people in the temple area watching this happen, I'm sure on a daily basis, they, they saw hundreds if not thousands of infants dedicated on a regular basis. This is something normal. This is just what they did. It was just a part of life. And Simeon, an older man who we don't know much about, but we do know he was a righteous man. We knew that he had a great relationship with God. We knew that the Holy Spirit spoke to him. How many times has he seen a family walk up to the temple to do just what Mary and Joseph have done? How many times in his life has he, has he seen such a routine thing? So what was different about this one? What was different that made Simeon 
have this transformational experience. What was it that made him run up to Mary and Joseph, rip baby Jesus out of their hands and look at him? Don't do that with Mandy and Shane today, by the way. <laughs> Ask them first. Maybe Simeon did that, but we're not told that. All we're told is in verse 28, Simeon took Jesus in his arms and praised God. He said to his God, now master, now God, let your servant go in peace according to your word. Because my eyes have seen your salvation. You prepared the salvation in the presence of all peoples. It's a light for revelation to the Gentiles and a glory for your people forever. Of all the hundreds of families that he's seen in his lifetime take their child to be dedicated, this one was different. This one made a, a transformational impact on Simeon, Simeon's life. And I think it's because of this. I think because in Simeon, Simeon's eyes, he had grown to a place in his life where he started seeking God's salvation in everything he experienced. I believe for Simeon, he started living his life with the faith that God is active in all lives and in all experiences, and that anything can, be, can, can, can direct us into God's love and grace because God is a redeeming God. God is a recreating God. God redeems all, and, and all aspects of life can be redeemed and can point us to the holiness and love and grace of Christ. I think if Simeon hadn't been living his life that way, if he hadn't been seeking God in everything that he experienced, he would have missed Mary and Joseph completely because they were not special to the eyes of the world. They were just like everybody else. But because Simeon, Simeon, that's a hard name apparently this morning, because Simeon, because his eyes were focused on the salvation of God, when he was in that presence, when he was in the very presence of God's salvation, he woke up to it. He saw it. He experienced it. And there in his hands rests the creator of the cosmos. There in his arms is the very being, the very God that gave Simeon each breath that he took, that knew the number of heartbeats in Simeon's body, that knew Every hair on his head, he was holding him. And in that very moment, Simeon says, I am at peace. I am at peace. I've experienced God's salvation. I'm at peace. Now, we don't know what happened next for Simeon. God may have answered his prayers and may have allowed Simeon to pass from this life into life eternal that very day. Simeon may have lived another 10 or 20 years, who knows? But we know this much. Because Simeon's eyes were eyes focused on salvation and salvation alone, he found peace. In the midst of something that was so routine, in the midst of something that happened on a daily basis. It wasn't even Simeon's family. It wasn't even a grandchild or a great-grandchild. It was just some total stranger. Simeon found salvation. Church, I, I believe that if we start looking at this world with Simeon's eyes, if we start looking at this world expecting to see God's salvation everywhere we look, our view of the world will be transformed. We'll no longer walk into the sanctuary and see a baptismal font or see communion elements and think to ourselves, oh my gosh, we're going to be late for lunch. Instead, we're going to look at these things and we're going to say, oh my gosh, this is the most important meal I'll ever eat. Instead of going home and just flippantly, callously, without thinking, saying certain things to family members, we'll think before we speak because we'll see the very image of God in those people. When I tell my wife I love her, they aren't just gonna be words. They're gonna be commitments. When my son comes and just says, won't you play with me? I'll see God's image within him and I'll learn to love him just as God does. 
when we go out into this world and we enter into our mundane lives beginning this week. 2018 isn't going to change anything starting tomorrow. It's going to be the same day with our same routines, the same things that each of us have to do every day, every week, every month. But all that can change if we put on Simeon's eyes and start looking for God's salvation in everything that we experience. Because at the end of the day, I truly do believe that that will change everything. When you hear me talking about a very routine prone and mundane prone practice like reading scripture daily, don't get annoyed with me. <laughs> Instead think, man, what if I truly opened my Bible and read it with Simeon's eyes? What if I truly did do what my pastor and my church is committing to do together? What if I saw God's salvation in these very words? And everything changes. And then we'll be able to stand before God and say the very words of Simeon. Now, God, let us go in peace according to your word. Because our eyes have seen your salvation. You prepared this salvation in Jesus for the presence of the entire world. It is the light of revelation for the entire world and the glory for your whole people. That is who Christ is. That is what Christ has done. And that is the very Christ, the very presence of God that Simeon's story proves to us that we can experience every second of our day. Are you going to approach the routine and the mundaneness of life just like you always have? Or are you going to have eyes that seek salvation? Are you going to have eyes that seek Christ? Are you going to have eyes that see Jesus? The very Jesus, the only Jesus that can truly bring you peace. Amen.